building a winning tribe. On 26 November 2008, Ajmal Kasab and a few of his other friends infiltrated a few places in Mumbai. One of the places was the Taj Hotel. Already a dozen people killed the then Prime Minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, announced saying, India will not take a soft stance on terrorism. From US they called, he said these terrorists will not be dealt with kindly. And they dispatched a counter-terror team, a counter-terror tribe that came and landed. Now worldwide, wherever counter-terror operations happen, the method is the same. Yeah, they will divide themselves into two teams. One team will enter the building opposite to the building where terrorists are there. Randomly, they will shoot at all the doors and windows so that no one can peep out from that building and see what is happening outside. Meanwhile, the other half of the team will blast open the door, they will go in, and the counter-terror operation will begin. Now, one huge challenge with regard to Taj Hotel, opposite to Taj Hotel, there was no building, it was the ocean. So where to give a counter-terror, sorry, where to give a backup fire from was a challenge. Immediately, they brought cranes from all construction projects around Taj Hotel. They tied three soldiers to each crane, lifted them in the crane, hanging mid-air, they gave a backup fire. The other team entered the Taj Hotel. They had a greater challenge. The floor map of the Taj Hotel was not available to them. So they had no clue where the elevator is, where the steps are, how many elevators are there. No clue at all. Every floor had hundreds of rooms. Every room had three possibilities. A terrorist, a tourist, or a terrorist holding a tourist as captive. Door after door they had to break open, throw in a smoke bomb. Before the smoke dies down, they have to decide is that image behind the smoke an innocent or a terrorist? If terrorist, fire, innocent, rescue. They did this for countless hours together. No food, no water, no facilities at all. They did this by the end of the operation. During this fire, counter fire, not a single civilian lost his or her life. Yeah, the beauty of it for them. The beauty of it, before they entered, a lot of people were killed and all that, but not a single wrong judgment from their side. A few army personnel died, but not a single civilian died. They executed this to 100% perfection that the world's best armed force, the US SEAL 6, studies the Taj operation as a project report. You can't ask for a better example for a winning tribe. I'll tell you of another tribe related to our profession. The next year, 2009, January 7th, one mail which literally shook our country was sent to the board of directors of a company, to SEBI and to the registrar of companies and stock exchanges. The mail from a man named Ramalinga Raju, where he said, the figures that are mentioned in my annual report are fudged, they are false, it is not true. When I say it is not true, I am not talking by a few lakhs or a few crores. It was shot by just around 5,000 crores. And until now, my, you know, as CA students, you will know two things you can literally not tamper with are cash at bank, cash in hand. Everything else people will adjust, but cash in hand, cash in bank. Now that was the beauty. That people will not see, no? There you can play whatever you want, however you want. Cash at bank, cash in hand, both. Now, entire country was shaken. 
Satyam was listed in New York Stock Exchange. There it was shaken, India's image was shaken. Thousands of jobs at stake, directly and indirectly. And at that time, our country had two choices, which was worldwide followed two choices. One, allow the company to die a natural death, which is what even the most powerful economy in the world, United States of America does. When Lehman Brothers declared they are bankrupt, government said, okay, you die. What else can we do? Second choice, pump in taxpayers' money to save that company. But the Indian government chose a third alternative. It decided to send a winning tribe, a bunch of six people that included two chartered accountants, Deepak Parekh, who was then the head of HDFC, and CATN Manoharan sir, who was the past president of ICAI. A tribe of six people, two golden eagles. These six people walked in. In 100 days, they turned around this situation, made this takeover by Mahindra possible, and thousands of jobs were saved. Worldwide, newspapers were writing about how brilliantly a country called India dealt with an economic crisis unforeseen before. <laughs> now, as chartered accountants, please do not have this ambition, I will qualify CA. No, that is not even an ambition. Do you go back thinking, I will brush my teeth tomorrow? No. Qualifying CA should automatically happen. Then what should be your real goal? You should use this two-letter word called CA to shake the world like these two men did with this tribe of six people. That should be your ambition. And for that, you need four elements and it is those four elements that I am here to share with you today. The first element to create a winning tribe is something called purpose. If you are wondering, what does purpose have to do with creating a tribe? No. You don't have a purpose, you can create a crowd. Yeah, you can create a crowd. You cannot create a tribe. If you don't have clarity about your purpose, you will become a part of the wrong tribe. There is the story of a guy who went to send his friends off in the train, okay? He went and uh, many a times we get so caught up in our conversations that we tend to forget some important things, no? So this guy was wearing his friend's bag on his shoulder. They were speaking. He forgot to give his friend the bag when that guy boarded the train. That guy also boarded the train and uh, he was busy checking in and all that, like on Instagram, boarded the train. this weight on my shoulder and then I, I, I forgot to give his bag. He took the bag, train was already moving, he was running to give the bag. Now that compartment had crossed him, previous compartment was coming, there were four people standing near the door and chatting and he screamed to them saying, take this bag. Now the noise of the train, they couldn't hear what he said, they thought he is asking for help to board the train. So instead of catching the bag, they caught his hand and they pulled him into the train. And this guy was super pissed with him. He said, what have you done? I wanted you to take the bag. Why did you guys pull me inside? And then they composed him. They, they you know, pacified him and they said, see, if we know to pull you into the train, we also know to put you out, not, not push you out. They said, put you out. In the next station, train will not stop but it will slow down. When it slows down, we will carefully put you on the platform. Deal signed. This guy was waiting. Next station came. The train began to slow down and they gave one very important piece of advice. They said, listen, when, you, when we put you out on the platform for some distance, run in the direction of the train so that because of that momentum, you don't fall and break your nose. This guy said, huh, thank you for the reminder. Station came. Carefully they put him on that platform. 
he remembered the advice he ran for some distance train again began speeding four guys standing in the door of the previous compartment thought ayyo pavam some guys running and coming to catch the train they pulled him and put him back into the train again now this is what happens when you don't have clarity about your purpose life will keep dragging you back into that same train again and again and again that's where this clarity about your purpose becomes important there was this small boy from a small island town from a very middle class family so he did not have so he spent much of his leisure time in the sea shore playing with his friends one day when he was playing with his friends he watched a sea gull you know you watch these tiny birds uh, when you go to the beach a sea gull plunge into the sea pick a fish and soar back into the sky when he saw that sea gull soaring into the sky he declared to his friends some day i will fly high like that sea gull and he didn't stop with that next day he went to school and he told his teacher miss i saw one sea gull yesterday some day i want to fly high like that sea gull now the teacher told him some day if you want to fly you should take aeronautical engineering the teachers are very practical people no so he said take aeronautical engineering he decided aeronautical engineering went to college first day of college he went to his professor and said sir some day i will fly high like a sea gull that is why i came here again professor practical man no he said some day once you have decided to fly why not fly the fastest become air force pilot decided air force pilot now attended interview missed the interview by a thin margin like passed but did not get aggregate okay so that story and uh, somewhere it was very broken didn't know what to do walked all the way from delhi to rishikesh there he met a person and he shared his journey and that person named swami sivananda said once a strong purpose comes from a pure heart it has to become reality some day maybe the path towards your destination is different walk in another path from there he started going in another path that path took him to the defense research development organization the drdo where he went on to create countless missiles for our country earned the highest awards like bharat ratna padma bhushan padma vibhushan and finally when he was well past 70 years of age he flew the fastest fighter plane in our country sukhoi but not as an air force pilot as he intended to but as the head of the air force navy and the army he flew it as the honorable president of india as dr apj abdul kalam now the beauty in this story is everybody who pulled dr kalam into the train pulled him into the right train only because he had clarity about what his purpose was yeah you are pursuing ca this conference is relevant to you yeah imagine you were just walking around in this college said edo tea vaasam varudhu tea kudichittu varala they pulled you and made you sit you made you sit inside this hall what use is it have amazing clarity about what your purpose is and when it comes to your purpose the bigger your purpose the greater will be your success what do i mean by the bigger your purpose in the beginning of 1900s there was this genius called samuel pierpont langley who was engaged in one of the most important missions mankind has ever embarked upon a mission to make man fly a mission to create the first airplane in this world he was a head of the department in one huge university like harvard his best friends included alexander graham bell who had just shot to fame by inventing the telephone andrew carnegie who was then the richest man in the world so these were some of the friends he interacted with on a day to day basis his funder was united states of american government which said we will give you how many ever million dollars you want as a grant his team consisted of the best minds from all across the globe now a plain willing combination right 
Such a team cannot go wrong. No? On another side, miles away, there were two two-wheeler mechanics who were engaged in the same mission to build an airplane. Their funds consisted of whatever revenue came from their workshop that day, they will go buy components, come and evening they will use it to build the plane. Their team consisted of the carpenters and agriculture workers from their village. Now between these two teams, which team has a greater chance of success? Langley's team, right? Almost close to the same time, both these teams launched their planes. Langley's plane crashed into the Hudson River, while the Wright brothers' plane took off and they came to be known as the Wright brothers who invented the airplane for all of us. The difference. The difference between both the teams was Langley's team, Langley first got into this mission because all his friends were already rich and famous. Getting this one thing right will make him also rich and famous. The entire team worked because getting this mission will put them on the pages of history. Those two Wright brothers, they worked day and night for this because they were from a village. The city and the markets were miles away. These farmers, despite working countless hours in the farm, couldn't eat three meals a day because by the time their produce reached the market, almost 30% of their produce got rotten in transit. So they wanted to shrink the size of the world so that farmers, not just in their village, but world over can eat three proper meals a day. The purpose was fame and money. The purpose was global welfare. And your success was caused by that. Your failure was caused by that. So what is your purpose to do CA? If it is to make money, if it is to become famous, you will become rich, you will become famous, but if it is to make this world a better place to live in, you will become one person like the Wright brothers. So very important, please get your purpose right. The second quality out of the four qualities is something called proactiveness. Proactiveness. Now you walked into this conference hall somewhere by around 8.45, 9 o'clock. You walked in with your friends, most of you, your office article assistants, your friends. Did you make new friends here? Hello? How many of you made new friends? Yes, it's on the See, this is one quality where MBAs totally rule over us. This quality of proactively going and creating connections. The story of one such MBA, he did his MBA from IIM Ahmedabad, one ordinary guy called Sanjeev Bikchanleni. He ran a very ordinary business. The business place, his workplace, would be 25% of this stage. Just 25% of this stage. And his company consisted of three people, including him. Okay? The business was, every day they will go to company after company, and they will ask for any possible job vacancies. This was around 40 years ago. Is there any vacancy in your company? Is there any vacancy in your company? They will note down all these vacancies. Evening, they will come and collate it into one sheet. The next day, in the local newspaper, they will publish it as an advertisement. Now, anybody who takes this newspaper and goes for an interview, these people will get a small commission for that. This was their business model. Now, one day, Sanjeev Bikchanleni went to a business expo there were countless stalls, and one stall, it was written WWW. Now Sanjeev Bikchanmeni found it very intriguing. What is this WWW? I've heard of WOW. What is this WWW? He went and asked the people in the stall, hey, what is this? And they, and they laughed at him for that. They said, you don't know what WWW is? He said, no, but I would like to learn. Please teach me. And they said it is something called internet 
anyone puts anything into the internet, the whole world can see. And he was mind blown. He came home, called his brother who was in the United States of America and he said, listen, I heard of something called internet. It seems you put something into it, the whole world can see. And his brother laughed at him and he said, we've been working on that for 10 years. What are you speaking? Don't you know what internet is? He said, I don't, but I want to learn. He learned what internet is. And then he learned to put something into that, you need something called a domain. And back then, domain could be bought only in US. He called his brother and said, I want two help. One, I want a domain. Two, I don't have money, so I want you to put money for the domain. And his brother very empathetically said, yeah, okay. And he got him a domain. There, this small company, which was 25% of the stage, metamorphed into a company called Nokri.com. This magic was born because leaving aside all his inhibitions, this man went and asked, what is www? And when I speak of inhibitions, I promise you, everyone in the world will have the same inhibitions as you. I qualified CA in 2014. And I went back to my Coimbatore branch for the first meeting as a member. Okay, that's a very proud uh, feeling, no? Now you're not a student. That same institute that you walked into as a student for countless years, as a CA, maybe countless years, now you are going as a qualified member. I was super proud and happy, went, it was a budget seminar. One amazing speaker from Bangalore addressed Phenomenally well, there was one provision I did not understand. I wanted to ask, I took my hand like this, then I looked around, there were all senior, senior chartered accountants, including G. Ramaswamy uncle. I thought, oh, yo, in the hall, I didn't ask. And then we went for the tea break. I went to my friend and said, Macha, Talk was phenomenal, this one provision I didn't understand. And very candidly he said, Mata, unakum puri liya, yanakum puri liya. Yam principal angirikare, va avarkita pai kepo. Then we went to principal. And very casually, he put his hands over my friend's shoulder and he said, hey, unglukum puri liya. Vang <laughs> avaru sir, vangu senior member, avarkita pai kepo. That like Gandhi's Dandi march, no? Gandhi started alone and then the crowd kept getting bigger and bigger. For he asked the senior member, and senior member said, I thought only I was outdated. We went to the speaker. And the speaker genuinely said, Sir, so many of you didn't understand. Then after the tea break, can I clarify? He said, Yeah, okay. He went up the stage, picked the mic, and he said, I heard from some people that they did not understand this provision well. Is there anyone else who did not understand the provision well? And all hands went up all across the auditorium. That day I learned everybody in the tribe is in the same level only. Somewhere we pull ourselves down out of that inhibition. One classic, again, one classic mistake most people commit with regard to being proactively reaching out to people, no? We move with people only of our class. Only of people with our class, our caliber. Some people we think, there is a security on the outside. One classic story that involves Salem, okay? One, uh, one news agency, one channel, one TV channel was recruiting two people for the job of a field reporter. Field reporter is something big is happening. There will be one guy standing there with the mic. They will be standing and talking. No? That job, two people. Now, 50 people had applied for that job. The company said, 10 o'clock only, we will open the gate and let you people in. So all these 50 people were standing outside the gate. And they were discussing current affairs, all that they were discussing. Every now and then that old security Anna will come and scream at them saying, 
கேட்டு முன்னாடி நீ கதையும் ஓரமா போய் நில்லுங்க and he go back into his security cabin all these people equally hated that security and all like ivanukku timidu paara namma kashtam ivarku puriyuma all that sentiments now one youngster out of these 50 people walked over to that security cabin and he told that anna ana security a irukiradha la romba kashtam illa na and that security said yen pa kekkareenga inga paaru solrala evana kekkarana nu paaru area geographical area you would like to work in now everybody wrote anywhere everywhere this guy wrote anywhere bracket capital font including salem <laughs> now these forms were sent in interviewers came and sat and form after form after form they saw this one application form very big font including salem and they were going nobody knew which place we are going to deploy them in how did this guy know call him in first they called this guy in first and they asked tumbi how did you find out we are going to deploy in salem and he said sir the job of a good news reporter is to gather news which other people cannot gather without revealing the source of that information that moment he got and like that is this man who drags people into board rooms and he pisses the people out of them called rangaraj pandey and he said my career breakthrough came not from some legend in the field of news reporting it came from that security and now outside my company so this is something that i would like to tell each one of you tomorrow after you qualify as a chartered accountant we will have this feeling that security who salutes you at the gate we can't learn anything from them again break out of that that inhibition also and you will learn so much from those people so first is having clarity about your purpose second is being proactive proactive i'll give you an activity during lunch at least get to know five new people at least five new people trust me build that here it will work wonders for you once you qualify third you need something called the power of words the power of words ages ago when first human beings decided to measure the intelligence human intelligence they arrived at a formula called intelligence quotient okay iq now iq equals mental age by physical age into 100 physical age is your actual age as on the date of taking the test mental age is they will give you one question paper how much ever marks you score that is your mental age so your marks divided by your age into 100 will give them your iq now this they arrived that within one and a half to two years what took them close to a decade was to decide what all questions to ask question paper anyone can set setting a question paper where 85% people fail that you need a skill no like board of examination of ici right like that they spent around 8 <laughs> around 8 years to figure out what all skills people need to have to be called intelligent after around 8 years of effort they decided on the top 3 skills a person should have to be called intelligent and the first skill they named was verbal skills second skill they named was perseverance third skill fearlessness if you are wondering what do these three have to be intelligent have to do with being intelligent one if you cannot express what you know the world will never know how much you know so verbal skills perseverance to become someone whom nadarajan fears you have to take a few attempts perseverance may november may november you shouldn't lose hope 
fearlessness. Outside people will say, oh, you fear at the ringla? Ama, at the ringla. Bro, that's all. These three qualities. Now, what if they got it wrong? Some technical mistake. What if they got it wrong? Hundreds of years before they did this research, another psychologist from Tamil Nadu did the same research and he gave his project report not in hundreds of pages like this team of psychologists. He gave it in seven words. He said, Solal vallan, sor vilan, anjan, avanai, igal vallan, yarkum arivu. The beauty of the Tirukural is, Thiruvalluvar placed these three traits in the same order in which those team of psychologists placed it. Solal vallan, verbal skills, sor vilan, perseverance, anjan, fearlessness. From Thiruvalluvar, to the bunch of psychologists, they agree on one thing, to be called intelligent, to win in life, you need this skill called the power of words. To lead a tribe, you need this power of words. There was this company that was started in a garage in US. They manufactured computers. They named their company Apple. The company was slowly growing. At one point, one of the two founders, Steve Jobs, realized, I need one specialist as the CFO of my company if I want to grow even bigger than this. And he took a list of people, eligible candidates and all that. And finally, he zeroed in on a name called John Scully. John Scully. But there was a problem with that. John Scully was then the CFO of PepsiCo which was one of the biggest companies back then. Apple was a startup. And Steve Jobs wanted to pay John Scully 75% of what Pepsi was paying. Imagine going and asking someone, come work for a smaller company, I will pay you 75% of what they were paying. Now John Scully literally laughed at Steve Jobs and he said, Steve, are you nuts? Who will leave a company like Pepsi to come and work for Apple for a lesser pay? Now Steve Jobs looked straight into his eyes and he said, John, are you kidding me? Are you saying you are going to be selling sugared water all your life? Don't you want to be a part of a revolution? Now imagine even that day when John Scully wore his blazer, he proudly wore it thinking, I am the CFO of PepsiCo. That definition in one second, Steve Jobs changed it. Don't you want to be a part of a revolution? And guess what? That day, John Scully quit his job. He came to Apple Computers. Now this is the power of words. Yeah, this is the power of words. If you want to be a leader of a tribe, you mandatorily need this skill called communication skills. Another classic example of this power of words, Apple grew even further. Apple was the leader, the leader of that industry. And Steve Jobs all of a sudden one morning decided, my Macintosh is taking a long time to boot up. He went straight to his engineer who was working on it and he said, I want you to bring down the boot up, uh, boot up time of Macintosh. And that guy was furious. He said, Steve, already we have the lowest boot up time in the industry. Bringing it down any further is impossible. Steve Jobs went, picked a marker, went to the whiteboard. He said, how many Macintoshes are there in this world right now? And that guy said, a number, one lakh, one lakh. How many times on an average will people switch on their laptops each day? Three times into three. How much is the boot up time right now? into that boot up time. He said, this is the mankind hours that it takes each day to boot up Macintosh. Every day your boot up time is high, you are killing so many people. Now imagine how that engineer will feel. Ayyo, every day. Now it changed from bringing the boot up time down to being able to save mankind, to save lives. He worked day and night for the next two weeks. Steve Jobs wanted him to bring the boot up time down by 10 seconds. He brought it down by 16 seconds because it was no longer about boot up time, it was about human lives. Now this 
my dear friends, is the power of words. Now you have a purpose, you are proactive, you use words to create a tribe. But there is one basic element without which your tribe will not last forever. That quality called personality. When I say personality, I don't mean looking like Aravind Swami or Kameshwaran. I am talking about having that empathy, kindness with which you can touch hearts. Recently, when this man called Ratan Tata passed away, you saw all the countless messages flowing in social media. Now, I spoke to you about the Taj incident. Now, before the counter-terror people entered the Taj Hotel, you know what happened? All these guests, the staff of Taj Hotel, they rushed them into a restaurant. Okay, one restaurant like this. They rushed them in there so that terrorists don't kill them. They locked all the doors and put table after table to seal the doors so that they can't break in and come easily. All this they did. But despite that, terrorists slowly closed in, closed in on that gap. They came to the restaurant. They began banging the doors. Now, our counter-terror team will reach there in a few minutes. But before that, if the terrorists come in, all these people are dead. Now they went and hid, hid behind a table, hid behind a wall. Finally, they had no choice. Those people broke the door and they came in. By then, this entrance door got opened. It was latched from outside, it got opened, but not all of them can make it out alive. Now the basic impulse to stay alive, you have your best friend with you, but your vehicle catches fire, you will not push your friend out first. You will jump out first. post social media, all that we can do, but I can't sacrifice my life for that friend. But here what these restaurant workers and chefs did, they formed a human chain. They held each other's hand like this, they formed a human chain and they sent these guests in between so that when terrorists shot, the bullets will come on their back, it will not hit their guests. You know how this selfless tribe got created? Because they had a selfless leader called Ratan Tata. There was this man for Ratan Tata. One person did a research on leadership, okay, research on leadership. He wanted to know who are the leaders who are truly respected. Usually the norm was whenever the leader is inside the room, people will respect the leader. Once the leader walks out of the room, the leader will have a hundred other nicknames. Yeah, this is how it is everywhere, no? So this guy called Simon Sinek wanted to know who are the leaders who are really respected. And he went to company after company. He was already the mentor for many of the Fortune 500 companies. Their situation was the same. He went to non-profit organizations. Their also situation was the same. He went to political parties. That was worst of the lot. Finally, his search took him to the US Navy. US Navy, where his friend was a high rank officer. There he noticed everybody respected and trusted the leader genuinely, 100% genuinely. And he stayed there to find out why or how is this respect generated. And when he stayed and stayed and stayed, he witnessed something beautiful everywhere. Always the leaders will put the juniors ahead of them. Like while getting into a truck, first the juniors will get in, then the seniors will get in, then the super seniors will get in. While getting out of the truck, first the juniors will get out, then the seniors, then the super seniors. This went all the way to their dining hall, which was only 30% of the capacity of that entire team, which meant in three batches only people can eat. And the juniors will go and eat first, then the seniors will go and eat, the super seniors will be waiting outside. Finally, they will go in and eat. And he titled his book, Leaders Eat Last. Look at what a beautiful definition for leadership. Leaders are people who eat last. And I found this definition super crazy. What do you even mean leaders eat last? 
until I came across this real life incident where this man called Dr. Kalam went to deliver a talk in Shillong, in IIM Shillong, IIT Shillong, I should say. He went to deliver a talk as the past president of India. So landed in a chopper. He was received by an army major rank officer. Now they were taken uphill drive, one hour drive. In front of them there was a gypsy going as an escort. In the gypsy there was a jawan, a soldier, standing with his heavy gun in one hand and holding the bar of the gypsy in another hand. Now when you're going uphill, sitting in the back of a gypsy itself is extremely uncomfortable. Standing is even more uncomfortable. Standing with a gun in one hand is unimaginable. Now Dr. Kalam saw this. He felt bad for that jawan. He told the Major, Major asked the jawan to sit down. The Major tried connecting via the wireless. Because of weather conditions, the connection couldn't be established. Then Dr. Kalam, the scientist brain, no? so he gave a phenomenal idea. You stop our car, Gypsy will also stop. Jawan will run and come and ask, Sir, what happened? We will tell him you go and sit down. Major said, Sir, clear instruction. Once we exit the helipad, we can stop only at the venue. If I stop the vehicle here, I will be court-martialed. Then sad, feeling sad for him, Dr. Kalam said, okay, we go. But every once in five minutes, Dr. Kalam will pester him, Major, try now. Major, try now. And Major kept trying. Connection did not get established. Reached the venue. Red carpet welcome. Taken into one beautiful room. All the guests were served food. Dr. Kalam turned to the Major and said, Major, I want to meet that Jawan. And Major looked at his watch and he said, Sir, getting late for the program. After program, I will arrange. Now, Dr. Kalam said, J Major, program will begin only after Chief Guest goes up the stage. Chief Guest will go only after eating. Chief Guest will eat only after meeting Jawan. <laughs> now, Major understood who he was dealing with. Called the Jawan in. Jawan came in. Dr. Kalam did something that none of them expected him to do. This was written by this major it himself. Dr. Kalam stood up, gave his food to the Jawan, and he said, you must be really hungry. I sat and traveled for one hour. I am hungry. You stood and traveled because of me. You must be hungrier than me. Please eat this. Now, the major wrote, Jawan started sweating in the cold weather of Shillong. And with so much nervousness, he said, Sir, they have made arrangement for me outside. I will go out and eat. Ma Dr. Kalam looked at Major. Message received. Major told the Jawan, eat, it is an order. The Jawan stood and he began gobbling up the food. And when he kept that empty plate on the table, the Major wrote, the satisfaction on Dr. Kalam's face was definitely more than the satisfaction he would have had when he launched this missile successfully. <laughs> now, this is a leader who ate last. And as he was about to go to the stage, the Jawan stood in front of him, gave him a salute, and he said, Sir, until now I've been the escort for countless people. For the first time, I got to escort a true leader. Dr. Kalam gave him a hug, climbed up the stage, and as he was delivering his talk, he succumbed to a massive cardiac arrest, and he dropped down dead. Friends, even on his last day, Dr. Kalam was a leader who only ate last, which is why till today, he is present. Which is why, till today, you go and ask a hundred people who is your favorite president of India, not 90, not 95, not 99, hundred out of hundred people will tell you one name, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. That man was a leader who always ate last and he created a tribe of people who are striving in their own small ways to become like him. But will be Will being so empathetic not make you a weak leader? How do you be a leader and still be so kind? If that is the doubt you have, I have one small activity for you. Keep your hands free. Hands free. Don't have anything on your hand. 
Don't worry, I won't make you stand up. All that punishment I won't give you. But keep your hands free. Follow my instructions. Do whatever I say in super quick speed. Okay? Right hand up. Dana star on the tackle. Okay, right hand down. Left hand up. On your shoulder. Down. Right hand up. On your cheek. Cheek and draw Kanna. Kanna and draw and give it to me. Natarajan said he is scared of you people. I told him keep your hand on the cheek, one small poem thing. You are keeping it there. Why did you do that? Huh? Why did you do that? Hello, question. Why did you do that? Because I did it? What did I tell you? Follow whatever I say. What did you do? Whatever I did. That is leadership. And there was one man who created countless leaders like this. Back then, we did not have these virtual classes and all. CA final classes meant Chennai. For all places like Coimbatore, Salem, Erode, Tirupur. Final classes means Chennai. Chennai final class means MP Vijayakumar. And he did not handle classes in classroom like this and all. The strength of MPV says the strength of Vijay Kumar's class will be more than the strength of the Vijay Conference, genuinely. It will happen in Mailapur Fine Arts Club Auditorium. You want a seat in the first, you people have left so many chairs free here, no? You don't know the value of those chairs. You have to get a seat in the first 10 rows, you have to go half an hour, 40 minutes early to MPV says class. The authority for accounting standards in his accounting standards class, it will be literally pin drop silence. You want to experience pin drop silence, you have to be in MP Visa's class. One day, MP Visa was handling class, dictating accounting standards. We were all writing down. There was some problem with the mic, one gushing noise in the mic. So MP Visa requested a student from the first row, can you please go out and call the technician and come? That student very happily said, sure sir, and he ran outside. MPV sir continued dictating, we continued writing. All of a sudden when I looked up, MPV sir was missing. His voice alone was continuing to come through the speakers. Now MPV sir cannot just go missing because he is a 6 feet 3 inches giant. And I saw MPV sir was missing, the voice alone is coming. Now MPV sir missing was more important than accounting standards. So I disturbed my entire row, front row, back row, three rows were searching for MPV sir. Now finally we saw MPV sir was sitting on the chair of the student he had sent out and even as he was dictating, he was writing notes for that student. Now from when I was in kindergarten, I have seen countless teachers send out countless students for countless things. For the first time I saw a teacher who thought, this student shouldn't be disadvantaged for my sake and he sat there and wrote notes for that student. That minute, I did not know whether I will qualify CA or not. I did not know whether I will become a faculty or not. But I turned to my friend and I whispered into his ears, someday if I become a faculty, I will strive to be at least one percentage of who this man is. And I did qualify CA in 2014 and this last one decade has been nothing but a very humble attempt to become one percentage of who that man called MPV sir is. So this is something that I would like to tell each one of you. If you have clarity of your purpose, if you have this proactiveness to reach out to people, if you have these power of words, the ability to communicate and inspire people, and finally, if you have this personality of always putting other people first, you will create a winning tribe and you will achieve big things in life. But before I conclude, there is this one leader who eats last that I wanted to talk to you about for just 30 seconds. One question, who is that person who eats last in your house every day? But all this while we've been shamelessly calling only our father as the leader of our family, right? Today, please take that one minute to go, give your mother a hug and tell her, you know what, you've always been a leader, just that I didn't know it. Thank you so much.
so much for having me and I would like to leave you with the words, true success will be measured not by the millions you make, the posh cars you drive or the plush bungalows you live in. Your true success will be measured by the number of people who smile when they think of you, by the number of hearts you touch and the lives you transform. Life is too special to be lived ordinarily. Create a blockbuster, live a fairy tale. I wish you all the very best in life. Love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.